we will often be asked to solve a system of nonlinear equations. A nonlinear equation is any equation that has exponents other than 1 or 0, or logarithms. To solve a system of nonlinear equations, we can use the method of substitution. However, we may also have to incorporate additional rules when solving for our final answer. Let's look at an example. Suppose we want to solve the following system of equations. 2x plus y squared minus y equals 4, and y squared minus 3 equals x. We can tell that these are nonlinear equations because the y exponent is 2. To find the solution, let's use the method of substitution. So here are our equations again, and by convention, we usually solve each equation for y and set the functions equal to each other. Substitution works as long as the function is solved for a single variable. So, since our second equation is already solved for x, we can substitute the function on the left-hand side of the second equation for x into our first equation. And so here's our first equation, and wherever we see x, which is at the beginning, the 2x, instead of x, we can plug in y squared minus 3, since we're solving these systems simultaneously. And that's exactly what we do. This is just another version of the method of substitution. And now we distribute the 2 over the y squared minus 3, and we obtain 2y squared minus 6. And then we combine the 2y squared plus the 1y squared, and we get 3y squared. And now we have this quadratic equation with only y in it, so we can solve it. If we factor out the quadratic form or expression into two, dif two different functions, 3y plus 5 and y minus 2 equals 0, well, we can set each one of those functions equal to 0, and then we can just solve for y using algebra, and we have two solutions for y star. Uh, we have negative 5 thirds, and we have positive 2. We can plug in y star, both of these two answers for y star, into either original function to solve for x star. Let's use the second equation to solve for x star. So here's our second equation, y squared minus 3 equals x, and we're going to plug in our two equations are two solutions that we got from the first part for y star. One of them was 5 thirds, the other was 2. And so we see we plug that, those two values in for y here. We have two different equations that now only have x in them, and that's what we're looking for. We're trying to solve for x star. And so we plug these equations in, we square them, and then we solve for x, and we find two solutions for x star, negative 2 ninths and 1. So our solution set is two ordered pairs. Negative 2 ninths comma 5 thirds is the first ordered pair, and 1 comma 2 is the second ordered pair. Sometimes if our polynomial doesn't factor as neatly as it did here, it may be necessary to use the quadratic equation. For the poly polynomial ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, the roots, or the solutions for x, are the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this is again what we call the quadratic formula, and you would have to use this if we weren't able to factor the poly polynomial like we were able to in our example. Let's work at an example that illustrates some of the logarithmic transformations. Suppose we wanted to solve the following system. The natural log of q equals 3 plus 2 times the natural log of p. And the second equation is the natural log of q times p equals 4.5 plus 2.6 times the natural log of p. Since we have the first equation solved for the natural log of q, it would be convenient to get the second equation solved for the natural log of q, because then we could just set the two functions equal to each other. Again, this is going back to the basic method of substitution. Using the rules of logarithms, we can rewrite the second equation as the natural log of q plus the natural log of p equals 4.5 plus 2.6 times the natural log of p. And then we can subtract the natural log of p from both sides and obtain the natural log of q equals 4.5 plus 1.6 times the natural log of p. Now, since we're finding a solution and the natural log of q must equal the natural log of q, we can set the functions on the right-hand side of the equal sign equal to each other. And so we know that 3 plus 2 times the natural log of p must equal 4.5 plus 1.6 times the natural log of p. We just get the constants on the right-hand side and the natural log of p on the left-hand side. Now we divide by 0 
and we see that the natural log of p is 3.75. To solve this for p, we can rewrite it as p equals e raised to the 3.75, and this just comes from the definition of the natural logarithm. And if we evaluate that in a calculator, p is approximately 42.52. If we plug this into the first equation, we can solve for q. Here's our first equation, and we've just plugged in 42.52, which is our estimate for p, the solution. And if we evaluate this, we see the natural log of q must equal 10.5. So again, using the definition of the natural logarithm, we can rewrite this as q equals e raised to the 10.5. And if we evaluate this, we get an estimate for Q, 36,315.5. And that's the end of the review for solving two nonlinear equations.